Hi, my name is James Shepard, and today I would like to talk to you about two issues. Uh, first of all, point of sale systems and how to sell them. And secondly, PCI compliance. Um, these are two areas where uh, sales reps lose a lot of sales and where they get really bad reviews from their customers because they don't understand these two areas. First of all, uh, point of sale systems have a very uh, particular way that they work, and I want to talk to you about it. Um, point of sale systems are actually about the easiest installations that you can get. Um, when someone already has a point of sale system in their location, most sales reps, when they see that, they automatically, for some reason, think, oh man, I can't sell them, I guess they're just too big, they're corporate, I can't get that sale. That is absolutely mistaken. Uh, you can sell them just as easily as you can sell somebody with a VX510 or a Hypercom or a Verifone, it doesn't matter. You can sell them just as easily. Um, in fact, in a lot of cases, more easily. Now, here's the way that this actually works. I want to explain this to you. Uh, let's say you are a business owner and you have a VX510 terminal and you decide that you want to get a point of sale system because maybe you saw one online and you just really want to track your people better, you want to track your inventory, you want to set up a rewards program, whatever it is that got you hooked, you want to set up a point of sale system. Here's what will happen when you do that. Every, just about every single point of sale uh, provider, they actually make most of their monthly money off of their residual from credit card processing. So what they do is they call you up and say, oh, that's great. Yeah, we'll come in and set up your point of sale system. It'll cost you, you know, four grand or five grand. And there's really not a whole lot of profit in that part of it. There is some. Uh, I sell point of sale systems. There is a little bit of profit there, but not much. Um, and so they'll go in and say, okay, uh, we're going to put in this particular software that's going to run on this point of sale system. And uh, we also have our own processing company that does your credit card processing, and we're just going to set that up for you, okay? Well, the merchant says, sure, that's fine, and they cancel their old processor because the point of sale system provider makes it seem like the only processor that they can use is the processor that uh, the point of sale system company uses um, because they make money off of it, and that's why they do it that way. And normally, the rates that they charge are outrageous. Uh, the point of sale system uh, processing side of it, the uh, merchant is getting ripped off big time. And so uh, you'll see a lot of 30 cent transaction fees and, and surcharges and uh, monthly annual fees, all kinds of stuff uh, off the charts. And so a lot of times they get really ripped off with that um, and they don't think they have any other option. Now let me explain to you the way that point of sale systems actually work. A point of sale system is just a computer. Um, it's just like your computer at home. The only difference is it has a touch screen instead of the normal keypad and mouse. Most of them. Now some of them actually have a keypad and a mouse. Um, but most of these, the hardware, most of it includes uh, like a scanner that's hooked up, hooked up to it and a credit card swipe machine. But it's just a computer. That's all it is. It's just a computer. Um, it's a computer that's hooked up to the internet with a touch screen. And most of them run Windows XP, just like your computer does, or they run the new Windows Vista. Um, so, I mean, they're just, it's a computer. It's nothing uh, confusing. It's a computer. And on that computer, just like on your computer, you have Windows, uh, uh, you know, you have things like Microsoft Word or Microsoft Excel. The software that they have on their computer, one of the software programs that they have is this point of sale software, okay? That point of sale software, when they come in, they pull up that software, and normally that's the only thing they ever have up. Uh, the point of sale company sets it up so that when the computer starts up, that software pops up automatically because that's the only thing they're really using it for is point of sale systems. Um, but make no mistake, it's a computer. They can make a Word document on it. They could send emails. They can browse the internet on their point of sale system. It's just a computer. But most merchants don't know that either because the only thing they use it for is for uh, processing transactions. So there's this software that runs. That software uh, is able to read these attached machines like uh, barcode scanners and credit card swipe machines. Most of them just have a simple USB uh, connection and they run down and plug into the back of the PC um, and they have a USB port and they plug it in and then this software reads the credit card swiper and the uh, scanner and all that good stuff and also it runs the drawer, they might have a cash drawer. That software program does all of that. Okay. Um, so again, I want to try to demystify this a little bit for you. It's not some big scary thing. A point of sale system is just a computer that runs POS software. Just to, just like you know Microsoft Word 2007. One of the other programs on their computer is you know Pizza Shops 2.7, and that's a so that's a POS software, and that's what runs on their point of sale system. Okay. Now 
the company that sets up this POS software for them, they have a remote access into this client's computer over the internet. They, and uh, what happens is when transactions come into the computer, they're what's called hosted, meaning the transactions are not handled on that merchant's computer, but everything is hosted over a network to some off-site location, it might be in California where their company is based, and so they can see all the transactions that are coming in and they process those transactions from an off-site hosted location. Now what happens is at that location, one of the files that's in this software uh, is a parameter sheet for credit card processing. A parameter sheet is extremely simple. I would give you an example one, but I can't show you any information from a customer. Um, but basically, each processor, you know how if you go to a bank and you send a wire transfer, there are certain numbers that they have to have. They have to have the bank routing number. They have to have all these certain numbers that tell them which bank it's coming from and which bank it's going to. And that's they have to have those numbers in order to send that wire transfer. The processing on a POS system works a lot the same way. It's very simple. There's a simple parameter sheet. Each, uh, uh, each processor has a separate parameter sheet that they provide to the POS software company. And they take that parameter sheet and they put that into their software program. And all that does is when a tr credit card transaction is run, that parameter sheet tells the software where to route that transaction and which processor to send it to. It's very simple. Um, simply have to set them up like you would any other merchant. You get their software name and version number, just like I said, you know, Windows 2000. There's Windows is the software, the version is 2000, okay? Uh, if you uh, go to a POS system, it's going to be called, you know, Pizza Food Inc., and that's the name of the software, and it'll be version 2.7 or version 2007 or whatever it is, is a version. You get that information. Once you have that document, it's a simple half page document, once you have that, all you have to do is simply uh, get in contact with the point of sale software provider. Sometimes you have to get the merchant's approval. Sometimes the merchant has to call their software provider and say, hey look, I'm switching processors, so you're going to get a call from Joe Blow is going to send you a new parameter sheet. And they say, okay, that's fine. Then you get on the phone and you call them and uh, you just get an email address. You email them that parameter sheet and that's it. Your job's done. That's all you have to do. It's extremely simple. And they are going to load that new parameter sheet in their side, take some five minutes, 10 minutes at the most, and you're all done. You're all set. That's all you have to do. Now, a couple issues with point of sale systems that we need to discuss. Number one, these different softwares that are out there, and there's literally thousands of different point of sale softwares that different uh, that, a, that a merchant can choose from. There's point of sale systems that are designed for pizza places. There are point of sale systems designed for clothing shops and all these different uh, varied software programs. They each run on different types of platforms. The problem isn't whether or not we support it. The problem is a lot of these point of sale companies that they're making money off of the processor that the merchant is using. So for obvious reasons, they don't want to switch them over. So you're going to run into some resistance there where they don't want to switch them over. But make no mistake, they could switch over. It's it, They could do it. It's just whether or not they will do it. And so your job is you're going to have to be a little persistent. You're going to have to negotiate here. You're going to have to work with the merchant and say, look, I'm running into a problem. I know you want to save money. I have the parameter sheet built and ready to go. For some reason, your POS software company is not helping me out here. I've had to do this many times. The merchant will call them and say, hey, what's going on? I want to switch. Why aren't you helping me out? And then they'll become more receptive and they'll help you out. But you're going to have to find out from them what platform, uh, once you get the software name and the version number, and then you just call the point of sale company and you just have to work that out and say, look, uh, I can put this merchant on global, on, on the Vital platform. That's one of the platforms, V-I-T-A-L. I'd like to put them on the Vital platform because they have a low transaction cost. Do you guys support Vital? And they might say, you know what, we can, but we really prefer this one. Okay, you know, you work back and forth. You find a platform that's going to work. And once you have the platform that's going to work, you send them the parameter sheet, and you're all set. That's all you have to do to switch over a point of sale system. It's very, very easy. Now, I want to segue from that into PCI compliance. This is another one of the most confusing areas for sales reps. PCI compliance basically is the regulations from Visa and MasterCard and from the federal government 
on how a merchant has to handle credit card information. It's like the Protection of Information Act. It's part of that. Uh, that's a, that's part of it, I should say. Um, so, uh, for instance, if you have a merchant and uh, they let uh, customers call in and pay over the phone, what do they do with that information? They should be keying it directly into their terminal and then pressing enter and being done with it. I've seen merchants literally at the end of the night write down people's credit card number, expiration date, and the security code on the back of the card. I've seen them write that down on a napkin, and then at the end of the night, they forget and they wouldn't have batched out, and they'll tell their employee, uh, you know what, just take those home and bring them back tomorrow, and we'll key them in first thing tomorrow morning. Okay, That would be an extreme example of non-PCI compliance. You do not send an employee home with a napkin that has people's uh, personal credit card information on it. Okay, That's basically PCI compliance is don't do that kind of stuff. So PCI compliance consists of basically two things. Number one, it consists of a survey. There's a survey that every merchant has to take. Now I do this for my merchants. I call them and I do this over the phone with them. It takes two minutes and you basically just go through and ask them things like what do they do with their credit card information and if you run into a problem where they say, well, no, actually I don't do that or there's a problem, you just say, okay, well, you're going to need to fix that and you explain what they need to do. It's common sense. Merchants know it's common sense. It's, they just haven't thought of it yet. But once you say, you know, do you really think it's the best thing to send your employees home with a napkin that has credit card information where they could go online and do an online shopping spree that night? And they'll say, no, of course, that's not the smartest thing. And they'll stop doing that. So uh, that's PCI compliance. There's a survey. That's the easy part. Uh, the other part is, and this is where it comes in with point of sale systems. <clears throat> Depending on the type, if they have an internet connection. Now, if they have a phone line, you're fine. You never have to worry about that. If they're hooked up to a phone line, they're PCI compliance, no big deal. However, if they're hooked up to an internet line, that internet connection must be secured by a password. So uh, let's say that they have their internet hooked up to a wireless router. And that wireless router uh, is available for people in their place of business to use that wireless router. Well, that wireless router has to be secured by a password. And if you can just log right in there and anybody walking down the street can log into their network over which they're passing credit card information, that is non-PCI compliant. And so they're going to have to do a little bit of work on that. So PCI compliance, very simple. It, it discusses the way that they handle information uh, and how that information gets transmitted electronically. Most merchants, I shouldn't say that, all merchants pay a PCI compliance fee. I had a guy just the other day, uh, actually about two months ago, he said, well, I don't want to switch. And I said, well, you do too. Everybody does. If you accept credit cards, you have a PCI compliance fee. It's an annual fee. You have to pay it. He said, no, the rep told me I don't have a PCI compliance fee. I said, okay, that's fine. Well, call me if you ever need anything. He called me a few weeks ago and says, well, they just charged me $139 for my annual PCI compliance fee. Not only that, they didn't help him complete the PCI compliance survey. He didn't know how to do it. He was then paying $25 a month because he was non-PCI compliant because he didn't fill out the survey. Uh, everybody pays PCI compliance. Everybody. If they accept Visa and MasterCard, they pay it. Um, and unless they're a really big business, that's the lowest that I know of. Um, so that, there's your answer on PCI compliance. Everybody has it. So don't get into this trap where the merchant says, well, I don't, you have PCI compliance. I didn't know about that. Don't get trapped in there. Tell them right up front. Now, you have an annual PCI compliance fee, Mr. Jones. So do we. Ours is probably a lot cheaper than the one you're paying. If they don't believe you, call the uh, processor right there in front of them. Give them the merchant number and say, how much is our PCI compliance fee? And you will learn that everyone has a PCI compliance fee. I hope this uh, video helped you out a little bit. Hope you have a great day today, and uh, look forward to hearing back from you.